سو بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم احمد ہوں و اسلی علی رسول الكریم اما بعد فقال عز و جل الحمد للہ الذي انزل علی عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و اہل العقدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی آمین یا رب Today inshallah uh, I'm sorry for my cough that I will be having <coughs> but I'm going to try to talk about the link between Sutul Kahf and Sutul Isra. But before I talk about these particular surahs, these two surahs, in general we should know about the subject, about the relationship of one surah to the other, the pairing of the surahs within the Qur'an. As you know, the Prophet ﷺ called Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran as Zahrawain, the two great lights of the Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ <coughs> he called the last two surahs Mu'abazatain, the two surahs in which you seek refuge from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. In the same way. You may have noticed the natural link that exists, for example, in Sutul Mudassir, Ya Yuhal Mudassir, Qum Fa'anzir. And Sutul Muzammil, Ya Yuhal Muzammil, Qum Al Layla Illa Qalila. So, Ya Yuhal Mudassir, Qum Fa'anzir, Ya Yuhal Muzammil, Qum Al Layla Illa Qalila. O oh, you who's wrapped up in the blanket, stand up and warn the people. This is one aspect of the nubuwa, of the prophethood of the Prophet ﷺ. Ya yuhal muzammil, O you who's wrapped up, qum in layla illa qalila. Stand up all night before Allah, except for a little bit. So one is talking about the prophetic aspect that has to do with human beings, warn them. And one is talking about the prophetic aspect, which is being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can say facing Allah. <coughs> In the same way, for example, you have Sutul Quraysh and Sutul Fil. Sutul Fil talks about how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saved Makkah or from from destruction, <coughs> and Sutul Quraysh talks about that how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given prosperity to Makkah, the people of Makkah, the people of Quraysh. Over there, the theme in Sutulfil is the protection of the Kaaba. Over there is فَلْيَعْبُدُ رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ So worship the Lord of this house. Then sometimes the pairing happened because the Prophet used to read them together. وسلم, and then when you studied it, you saw, oh, there's a great link between the two surahs. Sutul Kafirun and Sutul Ikhlas. Sutul Kafirun. The Prophet used to read, uh, in, for example, in, in the Sunnah, uh, Sunnahs of Surah Al-Fajr, the Prophet used to read Surah Al-Kafirun as the first surah, Surah Al-Ikhlas as the second surah. In the same way you have in Jum'ah, for example, Surah Al-A'la, Sabbih Ismail Rabbik Al-A'la, and Surah Al-Ghashiyah. <coughs> like this, Throughout the whole Qur'an, there's pairing of the surahs. Some are very beautiful pairs, very obvious pairs, very clear. Surah Rahman, Surah Al-Waqiyah, very clear pair. Surah Al-Saf, Surah Al-Jum'ah, very clear pair. And sometimes, this is a longer discussion, I'm not going to go into too much detail. But one surah will be a pair for a series of surahs. Like Surah Al-Hadid is for a, almost 10 surahs after. From Surah Al-Hadid to Surah al Tahrim. So, in this pairing of the surahs, one of the great pairs is Surah Al Isra and Surah Al Kahf. So, I'm hoping to Allah, inshallah. By the way, the intellectual background of this you should also know. <coughs> the first scholar who understood this and wrote on this subject was Mawlana Farahi rahmatullah and he did this because the British and the Orientalists 
they were saying that this Quran, it doesn't seem to have any coherency. So this <clears throat> question of the coherence of Quran, it was never really, um, it was studied in other parts of the Muslim world by other Mufassirin, but not like this where Bala Farahi really wanted to understand the coherence of the Quran. How is the Quran coherent? This is a longer subject of his of his discoveries of Quran, of how the Quran is coherent. But one of the things, one of the salient features of that discovery was that many, many, most of the surahs, all, all, almost except for a few, all of the surahs are paired up. Surah Al-Asr and Surah Al-Teen, for example. All the surahs of Quran are basically paired. Like the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, Shabbihatni hud wa ikhwatuha. I became old because of Surah Al-Hud and its sisters. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So over here, let me introduce to you Manafrahi. And of course, if there's a great scholar, you can do dua for him, inshallah. So Mawlana Farahi, it says here, he was born in 18th of November, 1863, was an Indian Islamic scholar known for his work on the concept of nazam of Quran or coherence of Quran. He was instrumental in producing scholarly work on the theory that the verses of the Quran are interconnected in such a way that each surah or chapter of Quran forms a coherent structure having its own central theme, which is called umud. So every surah has a central theme. What is the central theme of Surah Kahf? I'll mention that today. So, <coughs> this is just a basic introduction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the ranks and forgive Mawlana Farahi for the great contribution he did to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now today we're going to actually look at the Nazmul Qur'an, the coherence of Qur'an between Surah Al-Isra and Surah Al-Kahf. Today I'm going to go into more details than I've usually been going on this subject. So, but I'm not going to go into full details because that will take a much longer time. But one of the things I want to accomplish by doing this is to give you a very important key to understanding the end of times. <coughs> okay, Bismillah. First, I want you to notice that Surah Al-Isra starts with Subhana, Subhana al And Surah al Kahf starts with Alhamdulillah. Okay. So over there, Alhamdulillah. Over here, Surah Al Kahf. Alhamdulillah, Ladi Anzala Ala Abdihi. Over there, in Surah Al Bani Israel or Surah Al Isra. Both their names. Surah Al Isra is what usually the Arabs call it, and Bani Israel is usually what in the Indian subcontinent they call the surah. In terms of the theme of the surah, the name Bani Israel sounds better. In terms of the theme, as you'll also see. Over here is Subhanallah Asra bi Abdihi. Subhanallah for the one who took his servant up. Over there, Alhamdulillah for who brought down the book upon his servant. <coughs> Over here, that a specific area is mentioned. Just keep this in mind. A specific area is mentioned. What area is mentioned? Subhanallah asra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid al haram from masjid al haram meaning Makkah ila al masjid al aqsa this land from Makkah to al aqsa. Alladhi barakna hawlahu this is now blessed. Linuriyahu min ayatina so we will show you from our signs. And over here, I will say even the end of time signs. Inna hu huwa samiul basir. Indeed, Allah is all hearing and all seeing. In Surah Al-Kahf, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives us a warning of a terrible punishment 
and a terrible war. Is there a link between this area mentioned in Surah Al-Isra and this war mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf? I will come to this later. <coughs> but I want you to now notice <coughs> Surah Al-Isra ends with Qul alhamdulillah Qul, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Say alhamdulillah And the next surah starts with Alhamdulillah Surah Al-Kahf starts with Alhamdulillah So starting with Subhanallah And last ayah is what? And this is ayah number 111. And Surah Al-Kahf has how many ayahs? 110. So you can also see the length is similar also. Qul alhamdulillah, say alhamdulillah. The next surah then starts with alhamdulillah. Then if you notice, both these surahs, they end with Qul And, sorry, uh, uh, the, both these surahs end with two quls. Udullaha awud rahman Call Allah or call Rahman. Ayyama tad'uuhu falahu al-asma'ul husna. Whichever of names of Allah you call by, for him is the most beautiful names. Wala tajhar bi salatika wa la tukhafit biha wa abtaghi bayna thalika sabila. Nor be loud in your prayer, nor be silent, but follow a course in between. Prayer here means dua, not your salah, the prayers that we do. <coughs> and then the last ayah, second full, قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ وَلِيُّ مِنَ الظُّلِّ وَكَبِّرْهُ تَكْبِيرًا The surah ends with two quls. And now notice, Surah Al-Kahf also. Ends with two quls. Over there was قُلْ أُدُوا اللَّهَ أَوْدُ الرَّحْمَنِ أَيَّ مَا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَى Call Allah by His name Allah or Rahman. Whatever you name you call Allah for Him is all the beautiful names. Over here the same theme. قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرِ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِعْنَ بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدَ If all the oceans became inks, by the kalimats of Allah, by the commandments of Allah, by the praises of Allah, by all of the words of Allah, all the kun fayakuns of Allah, the oceans would run out before the before the words of my Lord would run. قُلْ O Prophet, tell them, لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ If the oceans had become ink of the words of Allah, the kalimat of Allah, the commandments of Allah, and the praises of Allah, and the words of Allah, and the praises of Allah, لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرِ The, the Bahar would finish. قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي Before the words of Allah or the commandments of Allah would finish. وَلَوْ جِعْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدَ Even if you came with another uh, additional uh, seas. Okay? So over there, two quls at the end there, two quls over here. Then the last qul here, over there the last, the first qul is about the names of Allah and attributes of Allah over here is also about the kalimats of Allah. Then, <coughs> over here is about the sovereignty of Allah and the authority of Allah. قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ for the one who will never take a son. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ and there's no one as a partner for him in his sovereignty. And he doesn't take any wali because of any weakness, no. And make Allah most supreme. Now you'll see this ayah actually ties both of the surahs together. But over here I wanted to mention ayah number 111 is talking about the attributes of Allah. And ayah number 110 is talking about the attribute of the Prophet ﷺ and following the Prophet ﷺ and doing good deeds. 
قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَارٌ مِثْلُكُمْ I'm a human being just like you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Prophet, say to them, إِنَّمَا indeed I am أَنَا بَشَارٌ مِثْلُكُمْ I'm a human being like you. Now there's more tafsir to this because the Prophet said, أَيُّكُمْ مِثْلِي Who of you is like me? يُوهَا إِلَيْ But the difference is revelation from the unseen has come to me. أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ that your ilah, your Rabb is one. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ أَمَلًا صَالِحًا And whoever desires to meet Allah, then let him do good deeds. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And let him have no partners in his ibadah. For dua in the unseen, in ibadah, worship, only the worship is only the right of Allah. Dua is only the right of Allah. Now, two quls here ending and two quls here ending. The first qul here and there about the kalimat, the names of Allah and the attributes of Allah. And both the last ayahs are talking about shirk. Okay, over there it is, over there it's talking about I'm like you, but revelation has come to me, but don't do shirk. And the message is, don't do shirk. <coughs> now, I'm going to inshallah come back to this in a little bit. Now, let me show you some more other salient features here. Now, notice now, <coughs> subhanallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Over there, asrabi abdihi, he took his servant up. Over there, Anzala ala abdihi. He sent down on his servant the book. Now I want to share with you this ayah over here. Lam yatakhid walada. Surah Al Isra is ending with saying, Say Alhamdulillah. And Allah has no son. And how does Surah Al Kahf start? Surah Al Kahf starts by saying, Alhamdulillah. And then says what? وَيُنذِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَ And that Allah may warn those people that say Allah has adopted a son. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ وَلَا لِآبَائِهِمْ So over there is اختصاراً يعني in short and over here now that is expanded. And this will happen many times in the twin surahs. What is said short in short here is expanded there. What is short here is expanded there. Okay? وَيُنذِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَ مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ They have no knowledge of what they say. وَلَا لِآبَائِهِمْ Nor their fathers. كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِمْ What an evil word it is that comes out of their mouths. إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَذِبًا They say none, not but a lie. Okay? So now, the other thing that's very interesting is this next part. لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلِيٌّ مِّنَ الظُّلِّ And he takes no wali, he takes no friend. Allah takes no friend, human being friend, out of weakness. No. And one very big link between this portion of the ayah and the next surah is, the next surah is about the greatness of non-prophets. People that were not prophets of Allah, but they were worthy of being mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah made them his friends. He made them his wali. هُنَالِكَ وَلَايَةٌ لِلَّهِ الْحَقِّ This is in Surah Al-Kahf. Over here in Surah Al-Isra. لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ وَلَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلِيٌ مِنَ الظُّلِّ Allah doesn't take friends because of weaknesses. No. And the very next surah starts with Alhamdulillah. The very next surah says, Allah has not warned those people that have adopted a son. And the very next surah is about a whole group of people who became friends of Allah, but they were not prophets of Allah. They were walis of Allah, friends of Allah. They were allies of Allah, doing the work of Allah. Allah, Allah maja'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. In ayah number 9 of Surah Al-Isra, Surah Al-Bani Israeli, Allah says, after mentioning the punishments and the wars that were done upon the people, the children of Bani Israel. Okay. Then Allah says, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ يَحْدِي لِلَّتِهِ أَقْوَمْ Now the word أَقْوَمْ is used in Quran in this surah. Now just keep this in mind. 
Inna have al Quran yahdi lillati hi akwam. Indeed, Quran guides to the thing that is most upright. Wa yubashir al mu'minin al ladina yamalun al salihat, and it gives good news, bishara, good tidings to the believers who do good deeds, who make things right. Anna lahum ajran kabira. For them is a big reward with Allah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah make us amongst them. Now exactly what is said here about the Qur'an being aqwam, the believers doing good deeds, despite the difficulties being faced. That is in the ayah number 1 and 2 of Sutul Kahf. Over here, Anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja qayyiman. Or the Yahdi Lilatihi Akwam, same word. Or the Qayyiman Liundira Ba'san Shadida. To give you a warning of a Ba'san Shadid, of a great war, of a terrible punishment. But Ba'san Shadid, more, more precisely, great war. Milladunhu, it will happen from him. وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And to give the good tidings to the believers الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ To who do the right things. أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا حَسَنًا For them will be a great reward. Same thing here, same thing there. Over there, لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا Over here is أَجْرًا حَسَنًا over, over here is the word قَيِّمًا Over here is the word أَقْوَم Over here is the word كِتَاب Anzala ala abdihi kitab Over here is the word Quran. Okay. And <clears throat> so now let's go on to the next one inshallah. Over here ayah number 13 and 14 in Surah Isra verses uh, ayah number 49 of Surah Kahf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَكُلُّ insan أَلْزَمْنَهُ الطَّائِرُ فِي أُنُقِي and for every person, we've attached his fate, his, you can say, something to his neck. So there's something here, either allegorically or physically, which will be taken and then given to us that here, this was your fate. This is what you did. Bring out, <coughs> we'll bring out a book for him from which will be then opened for him. Then that book, when that is given to you, Iqra' kitabak. Read your book. Iqra' kitabak kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. This book is enough for you to take your own account. This was with you. It was measuring you, your morality. And it is everything you did is there. And now you can read it for yourself. Ayah number 13 and 14 of Sutul Isra. The same side of this is now given in Sutul Kahf, the other the other side of this. Wawudi al kitab and when the book is placed, Fatar al Mujrimina Mushfiqina Mimma fi and you'll see the criminals, they will be in fear of what is in this book. Ya Wailana. They will say, Oh, what what a destruction for us. Mani had al kitab. What is this book? La yuadilu sahira tan wala kabira. It didn't leave anything. Sahira tan wala kabira. Illa ahsaha. It didn't leave anything small about me, didn't leave anything big about me, except it contained it. وَوَجِدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا And they will find whatever they did present before them. They'll see it live. وَلَا يُذْلِمُ رَبِّكَ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And your Rabb doesn't do zulm to anyone. No. So now you can see, this talks about one dimension, and that talks about the other dimension of the same scenario. So the same themes, you can say, are manifested in the to two surahs that are usually twin surahs. And this is how you know, you will say common themes, but sometimes you also see common words. So we'll see examples of that too. Another example can be, ayah number 15 of Isra. وَمَنِ اِحْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَحْتَدِي لِنَفْسِي Whoever is guided is guided for his own self. وَمَنْ ظَلَّ فَإِنَّمَا يُظِلُّ عَلَيْهَا and whoever is misguided, his, his misguidance is on him. And no one will bear the burden of another. And we don't punish anyone until a messenger of Allah comes. Okay. 
So, and then in Surah Al-Isra, uh, Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah, end of the ayah, Surah 17, مَنْ يَحْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُحْدَدُ Whoever Allah guides, He's guided. وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْ And whoever goes astray, فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا Then he will find no one to guide him in the right way if Allah doesn't guide you. These are times where if Allah guides you, Allah guides you. Otherwise, going astray is extremely easy and going on the right path and seeing through the things and seeing the right path is extremely difficult. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us. Over here, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ We don't punish anyone until we send a messenger. This, in terms of this surah itself, is very important and a sign of the coming down of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam because that final punishment will only come when a messenger is sent in front of the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ And we don't punish حَتَّى نَبْأَثَ الرَّسُولَ until we've sent a messenger. Then in ayah number 16, Allah says, إِذَا أَرَدْنَا أَن نُحْلِقَ الْقَرِيَةِ When we decide to destroy a city, a town, أَمَرْنَا مُتْرَفِيهَا We command its affluent ones, meaning we send a messenger to its affluent ones, or we give command to its affluent ones. Both translations would be correct. فَفَسَقُوا فِيهَا And then they go against all bounds in it. Okay. فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهَا الْقَوْلِ And then our word comes true on it. فَدَمَّرْنَاهَا تَدْمِيرًا And then they're completely destroyed. So here, Allah's rule to destroy a nation. And the other side of the same issue, so this is what you can see happening in the exterior world. Keep this in mind. There is a people, they've ruled, they've gone across all bounds. They're spending more than they're making. The income of the country is less, the expenditure is more. What is this? Right? Putting money into their own pockets, hiring their own friends, etc., etc. Ayah 59, Surah Al-Kahf, same theme from a different perspective, but in a very... Tilka Al-Qura, these were the towns, Ahlaknahum, we destroyed them. Lamma ظَلَمُوا, when they did ظُلْم, when they did wrong, when they did injustices, when they committed crimes, وَجَعَلْنَا لِمُحْلِكِهِمْ مَوْعِدًا And we set a time, appointed time for all of them to be, for that city, for those cities to be destroyed. So you can now see how the linking of the two surahs, Surah Al-Kahf and Surah Al-Isra, is, and how this is generally in the pairings of the Qur'an. Okay. Now let me give you a, a few more examples. Also one of the major themes of this surah, Surah Al-Isra and Surah Al-Kahf, that is similar, is that loving this world versus denying the next. So you'll see this in ayah number 18 and 19, and then you'll see this in Surah Al-Kahf as I'll show it to you in two different verses. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَ تَعَجَّلْنَا لَهُ مَا فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ Whoever desires this عَاجِلَ, the here and the now. عَاجِلَ really means the translation this brother has done, fleeting life. But better is عَاجِلَ. Ajila, the here and the now, what you you want the now. This is even more relevant in this fast paced world of Man kana yuridul ajila ta'ajjal nalahu. We make then we give him we expedite it for him. Fiha manasha, whatever we will from it. You won't get what you want, but we'll give you from if you want that, we'll give it to you. Liman nurid whoever we want. Thumma ja'anna lahu jahannam. Then we'll make the hellfire his place. Yaslawha. And he'll be thrown in there. Madhmuma madhura. <coughs> condemned and defeated. Waman arad al akhirata. And whoever desires the next life. Wasa'ya laha. And he showed it with his effort. Sa'yaha. With ex- with s- pursues it. Okay. He shows effort. Wahua mu'minun. And he's a true mu'min. فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased and will acknowledge that uh, effort and your wanting the hereafter. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah make us amongst those people. Now this ajila, this ajila of dunya, the fleeting life or the here and the now. So Al-Kahf uses a different term for it. And it comes in many places, but I'm only going to show you two 
And ayah number seven, Inna ja'alna ma'alal ardi zina tallaha. We made whatever is on earth is zina, a beauty, an ornament. You know, it has the glitter, it has the exterior glitter. And then in another ayah, Al mal wal banuna zina tul hayatul dunya. The wealth and the children, they're, they're zina. This ajila is zina. This ajila, the here and the now is zina. You get you get so focused on this ajila and this zina that you forget the hereafter. So this is one of the major themes of this uh, surah, these both surahs. Then it's to kahaf on this same issue of ajila and, and zina. You have ayah number 28, which is very central to the whole surah. Wasbir nafsak, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Have sabr with your nafs. Ma'alladina yad'una rabbahum with those who call upon their Rabb. Bilghadati wal ashiyi in the mornings and in the evenings. Yuriduna wajha desiring his face, meaning his pleasure. Wala ta'du aynaka anhum and don't turn your eyes away from them. Turidu zina tul hayatid dunya desiring the glitter of the world. Wala tu ti'man aghfalna qalbahu an dhikrina and don't Follow the one whose heart has been covered from doing our dhikr. وَاتَّبِعْ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُوطًا And his, he is following his desires and his affair of his life or those people. Their affair is confused. Confu- they're, they're, they're in furuta. They're in confusion. Using this very ayah, let me make the next point, which is that the difference between Isra and Sunt Kahaf the contrasting feature amongst these two su- in this these two surahs is that Surah Al-Kahf is talking about things from a spiritual perspective. The emphasis is on the spiritual. And Surah Al-Isra, the first surah, the emphasis is on the uh, Zahir, the commandments, the Sharia. So therefore, what interesting is the ten commandments come in Surah Al-Isra, okay, from Ayah number 23, and you can go all the way up to uh, Ayah number 39. This is the Ten Commandments in the Quran. Let me just go over it very quickly because obviously this is this is uh, not is going to take too much time. But I'm going to very quickly, maybe I'm going to read a part of every one of those ayat. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا And Allah had ordained, Allah had commanded you, okay, Allah says to Bani Israel now, that you would worship no one but Allah. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And you would be kind to your parents. So it continues in ayah number 23. And then the dua, رَبِّرْ هُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا is mentioned. رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ then, وَآتِذِ الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ And give your relatives their rights and the miskin. وَابْنِ sabil And the one who's traveling and got lost. وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْسِيرًا And don't become of those people that are wasteful. إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ Those people that are extravagant and they're spending, they're the brothers of the devil. And then, uh, it gives other rulings about spending. Don't constrict yourself that you give everything away and then you're, uh, you know. Don't tie your hands to your neck. Nor extend it all the way that you give everything. Then you'll be sitting uh, blaming yourself and regretting yourself. And don't kill your children out of fear of poverty. We feed them and you. Killing them is a big sin. And don't go near zina. Okay? وَلَا تَقْتُلْ نَفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And don't kill any soul except by a just 
cause. Then, وَلَا تَقْرِبُوا الْمَالَ الْيَتِيمِ And don't go near the wealth of the orphan. وَأَوْفُوا بِالْكَيْلَ وَال... وَأَوْفُوا بِالْكَيْلَ إِذَا كِلْتُمْ وَوَزِنُوا بِالْكِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And weigh the measurements in a just way. And then finally, I think in a sense one of the most important verses, وَلَا تَقْفُوا مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ And don't occupy yourself with something which you have no knowledge. Don't try to guess the unseen. Again, over there is Rajman bil ghaib. They throw darts in the unseen. It's tul kahaf. And over here, you're only responsible for what you see and what goes into your heart and what is your mind telling you. وَلَا تَقْفُوا مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِعِلْمِ إِنَّ السَّمْعَةِ How do you know something? Either you heard it, transmission, narration, sanad, testification, witness, you heard something, <coughs> or you saw something, and by hearing and seeing, then you make a judgment in your mind. That's fuad. Kullu ulaika anhu anhu masula. So you stick with your what you see and hear, and the result of seeing and hearing and your mind. These are the three things you're accountable for. Okay, we're not not trying to guess things as sometimes brothers try to do. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَاحَ Don't walk on the earth proudly. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ مِمَّا أَوْحَى إِلَيْكَ رَبُّكْ مِنَ الْحِكْمَةِ This is of the hikmah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. In contrast to these ten commandments given to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, is the other side of events, that is the, the story of Musa and Khidr. Musa and Khidr, or you could say the spiritual side, dhikr, Saying insha'Allah before you do something. Masha'Allah. It would have been better if you said masha'Allah. La quwwata illa billah. The ayah of the Quran we studied where it says, if all the kalimas of Allah were made into oceans, remembering the wadhkur rabbaka idha nasit. Remember Allah when you forget Him. This is Surah Al Kahf. Wadhkur rabbaka idha nasit. And uh, the dhikr and the spirituality and having basira. All that is in Surah Al-Kahf. And then Surah Al-Isra is more emphasized on the law. You had these laws and you were breaking it. So, <coughs> this same point mentioned in ayah number 36 of Surah Al-Isra. وَلَا تَقْفُفْ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ And don't occupy yourself <coughs> which are you have no knowledge of. In the sama, indeed, what you hear, like you're hearing from me, basara, what you see from Quran, for example, or from the signs of Allah, or is wal fuad, and your heart and your brains. Kul ulaika kana anhu masula. These are the three things that you're responsible for in terms of knowledge. Knowledge comes from these three sources: your eyes, your ears. These are the sense data, and your mind that gets it from there. But don't do guesswork. Okay. The same theme is then mentioned in where? In Surah Al-Kahf in this verse. Ayah number 22. سَيَقُولُونَ ثَلَاثَةٌ وَرَابِهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ They say there were three and the fourth was the dog. وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ وَسَادِزُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ And they said there were five and the sixth was the dog. رَجْمًا بِالْغَيْبِ Throwing darts in the unseen. They have no idea what they're saying. وَيَقُولُونَ سَبْعَةٌ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ And they say there were seven. <coughs> and because Allah mentioned the seven after mentioning the ones that are wrong completely because Allah says about them this is the rajman bil ghaib this is the throwing you know uh, the darts in the unseen guessing of the unknown but after saying guessing of the then Allah says wa yaquluna sab'atun wa thaminuhum kalbuhum and the seven they some said they were seven then the eighth was the dog qul rabbi a'lamu bi iddatihim ma ya'lamuhum illa qalil Allah knows truly what their numbers are and only a few really know for sure. فَلَا تُمَارِي فِيهِمْ Don't argue about them. إِلَّا مِرَاءً Except that argument. ظَاهِرًا Which is obvious. Stick with things you know. Things that you see. Things that you hear. Don't go into the unseen. The problem of the modern times is people think knowledge means guessing. Knowledge doesn't mean guessing. إِلَّا مِرَاءً ظَاهِرًا And the only way to make even an educated guess is by the Prophecies of the Prophet sallallahu Don't ask these people about these unknown things. 
So this is another common theme between the two surahs. <coughs> and sometimes, like I said, you find almost very similar uh, words even. So for example, ayah number 41 of Surah Isra says, وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ And we have explained in this Qur'an the dhikri so that you will, different ways of that you may remember. وَمَا يَزِيدُهُمْ إِلَّا نَفُورًا But it adds nothing but the, to their rebellion. And then in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah says in ayah number 54, وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثِلٍ and indeed, we have elaborated in this Quran every type of example. Can al insanu akthara shayin jadala? But man wants to argue and argue and argue. Here's another example of how surahs that have a twin relationship with each other, they'll have similar, again, uh, wordings. Wa'ith kulna lil malaikatis juduli adama. And then in Sutul Kahaf, you have. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ تِسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ And then فَسَجَدُوا And then also again فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Over here now it changes فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Till here it's the same قَالَ أَسْجُدْ لِمَنْ خَلَقْتَ قِينَ Should I bow down to the one who was created from dust? And over here كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنْ He was amongst the jinns فَفَسَقَ عَنْ عَمْرِ رَبِّي So he rebelled against the command of Allah Do you take him and his dhurriya children as your friends? Minduni, other than me, you're going to trust them. Wahum lakum adu, even though they're your actually and they're your enemies, you're taking them as your friends. This is a very, you know, a very uh, awful exchange. Evil is the exchange for the wrongdoers. And you're wrong, it, it is wrong for you to make such an exchange. In ayah number 58 of Zutul Isra, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ And there will be no city, إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُوهَا Except we will destroy it قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Before the Day of Judgment. أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا Or we will severely punish it. أَذَابًا شَدِدًا With a severe punishment. كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا That is already written in the book. Okay, already been written, will happen, it's going to happen. Every city will be destroyed on the earth before the day of judgment. This same point is meant, made again in the same ayah that I mentioned before, but it was from a different perspective. Qayyiman, a book that is warning you clearly, liyundira, that you are warned, ba'san shadid, of a severe, severe punishment. Milladunhu from him. Meaning, in the end, this war. <coughs> <coughs> will be for the victory of the believers. Okay, this is why it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now notice the word ba'san shadid, okay? To warn you of a ba'san shadid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and then in this surah, Allah is saying, <coughs> There will be no city except Allah will destroy it or punish it. But then you notice in the very beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What? In ayah number five. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا This is to Bani Israel. When the first of those promises came to destroy your temple, بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا we, we raised our servants against you. Meaning Assyrians came from the north to bring, and the, uh, the, they came from the north. عَلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَعْسٍ شَدِيدٍ Same word, بَعْسٍ شَدِيدٍ Possessing great might. بَعْسٍ شَدِيدٍ Military might. فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَابِ They entered your houses. That's the type of destruction. This word ba'san shadid over here. Qayyiman <coughs> ba'san shadid and in Sutul Isra in the beginning when it's talking about Bani Israel and then in that verse immin qaryatin nahnu muhlikwa there will be no city except we will destroy it before the day of judgment. So these are the common themes 
And then also common words like Ba'san Shadid and then Ba'san Shadid. Then in ayah number 55 is Sutul Kahf. Okay. Actually, let me start with Sutul Isra like I always have. Uh, ayah number 94. What has prevented people to believe is Ja'ahumul Huda? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when guidance has come to them, Illa an qalu, except they say as an excuse, Aba'atha Allahu basharan rasula, has Allah made, made sent a man as a, as a human being, as a rasul? So this, wa ma man'an nas an yu'minu, you find it in Surah Al-Isra, and then, wa ma man'an nas an yu'minu id ja'ahumul huda, in Surah Al-Kahf also, wa ma man'an nas an yu'minu id ja'ahumul huda, in Surah Al-Isra, okay? Over here it is, وَيَسْتَغْفِرْ رَبَّهُمْ And that they seek forgiveness from their Rabb. إِلَّا أَن تَأْتِيَهُمْ سُنَّةُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Except that punishments like the people before would come to you. أَوْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ أَذَابُ الْقُبُولَ Or you would come face to face with a punishment. Okay? So the similar words, similar theme. Again, another example of a common theme and you can say a sloop style. ذَلِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ This is the reward or repayment for them. بِأَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا Because of the kufr that they did. This is Isra. بِآيَاتِنَا With our signs. وَقَالُوا أَإِذَا كُنَّ عِظَامًا وَرُفَاتًا When we become bones and we become fragmented into little pieces. أَإِنَّا لَمَبْعُوثُنَا خل... خَلْقًا جَدِيدًا Will we be raised up again? And a new, fresh creation from that? So, ذَلِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ Okay, and over here, ذَلِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ And that is their reward, the hellfire, بِمَا كَفَرُوا For the kufr that they did. Now if you combine the two, what is the kufr they did? Denying the Day of Judgment. ذَلِكَ جَزَاؤُهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ بِمَا كَفَرُوا وَاتَّخَذُوا And they took آيَاتِ My signs وَرُسُلِي huzuwa, And they took my signs and my messengers as a joke. You thought this eschatology is a joke? You're taking the Prophet as a joke? You're not taking this seriously? So, this is an example of similar theme and then also similar asloob is pointed to or style. Another example of a common theme, Alam yaraw anna Allah Awalam yaraw anna Allah alladhi khalaq as-samawati wal-ard Do they not consider Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth. قَادِلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلَقَ مِثْلَهُمْ That he, obviously logic is what? If he created it before, it, he could create it again. قَادِلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلَقَ مِثْلَهُمْ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ أَجَلًا لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ And Allah has an appointed a time for you. There's no doubt about it. فَأَبَا ظَالِمُونَ إِلَّا كَفُورًا But refuse the, the wrongdoers, they do nothing but refuse and go more into kufr and more into kufr, more into denial. So about the creation of the heavens and the earth, the logic is given. And then in Sutul Kahf, the other side of the same point is made, مَا أَشْهَدْتُهُمْ خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ The reality is, folks, you did not witness the creation of the heavens and the earth. Don't talk like you did. وَلَا خَلْقَ أَنفُسِهِمْ Nor the creation of yourself. وَمَا كُنْتُمْ مُتَّخِذِينَ مُضِلِّينَ أَضُوضَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I don't take uh, those that go astray as uh, as the helpers of my deen, as the helpers of my Islam. A similar example of similar wordings in the end of, of ayah number 105 of Surah Al-Isra. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا And O Prophet ﷺ, we didn't send you except as Mubashir, the one who gives glad tidings <coughs> and warns the people, Nazira. You have the exact same words in Surah Al-Kahf in ayah number 56. وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ and we don't send any messengers. This is now instead of the Prophet is referring in general to prophethood. So similar but yet in a different uh, tense or a different uh, with plurality. وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ 
except as good the ones who give good tidings <coughs> and the one who warned the people then over here wa bil haqqi anzalnahu wa bil haqqi nazal in the beginning of the ayah and we sent it down in truth and in truth it has come descended to you o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam over here it talks about wa yujadil alladhina kafaru bil batil so that those who disbelieve right you jad to do jidal alladhina kafar those who deny the truth so there will be an argument against those who stand with falsehood li yudhidu bihi alhaq and they those that are with falsehood try to defeat the truth okay and those who disbelieve argue with false argument in order to defeat the truth wa yujad alladhina kafaru bil batil li yudhidu bihi alhaq to right wa takhudu ayati wa wa ma unziru huzuwa they take my warnings and my signs as a joke but again this is an example of what similarity of theme and also similarity of wordings <coughs> now i want to come to to the second last and main point and the key links that i actually wanted to share now i will share with that now that you have an idea so in surah al-isra allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the beginning وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And we uh, had قَضَيْنَا uh, We had ordained إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ To Bani Israel فِي الْكِتَابِ In the book لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ You will cause corruption in the world. This لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ Notice these words. O Bani Israel, you will cause corruption in the world. twice maratain twice wala ta wala ta'luna aluwan kabira and you will rise to a, and you will try to rise to a great height la ta'luna aluwan kabira notice the wordings here as i've been doing in surah al-isra is وقضينا الى بني اسرائيل في الكتاب لا تفسدن في الارض مرتين ولا تعلن علوا كبيرا now notice the similarities with قالوا يا ذا القرنين they said oh the القرنين ان يعجوج ومعجوج مفسدون في الارض indeed يعجوج and معجوج are causing fasad in the world similar in words <coughs> and similar in theme fil ard mufsidun fasad fil ard mufsiduna fil ard and over there over here is la tufsiduna fil ard you will definitely cause corruption in the world and over there is mufsiduna fil ard if these are twin surahs and they have similar words there is a link Over there is saying Bani Israel will cause fasad in the world twice. Over here it's saying about Ya'juj and Ma'juj that they cause fasad in the world. What is the result? What is the result? The result is that there are people from Bani Israel from a certain part of the world that are causing fasad in the world today. and those people that are causing fasad in the world today they are part of bani israel they uh, they allude themselves to be part of bani israel qalu ya dhal qarnain inna ya'juj wa ma'juj al mufsiduna fi al ard versus wa qadayna ila bani israel fi al kitab la tufsiduna fi al ard maratain o bani israel you're going to cause big chaos in the world twice This is how the relationship goes between this is an example of how relationship goes between twin surahs in this case to al-Isra and to al-Kahf those of you that are interested in studying to al-Kahf i hope this has shed new light for you and opened uh new doors for you in your study of to al-Kahf and you can find those of you that are uh definitely more intelligent than me maybe you can do dua and allah will show you even more than what i have uh showed you here because there's definitely more 
<coughs> but the link between Ya'juj and Ma'juj and Bani Israel is clear. And the link is Fasad. So Ya'juj and Ma'juj doing Fasad, Bani Israel doing Fasad. So you can fill in the blanks. Who is what? So this is how the two su surahs, two pairs of a surah, the two, uh, two pairs, uh, uh, surahs that are a pair. Okay. So how they help un one another to understand from each other's meanings. That if you have in mind this surah, its pair is this surah, and you're studying this surah, it is good to know what is also in the themes of the twin surah, because they come together to make a whole picture. One of the aspects of the whole picture, so the Isra will tell you what brings destruction. And so the Kahaf will tell you what will save you from destruction. So the Isra will tell you what will bring destruction. So the Kahaf will tell you what will save you from destruction. Now you just have to read the surah from this perspective. And the main, the umud of Surah Al-Kahf, the main theme of Surah Al-Kahf that comes over and over and over and over and over again is what? Don't rely on materialism. Don't rely on cause and effect. Don't be so dazzled by the zina of hayat al-dunya. This, the glitter of this life. This life is not the real life. There's another life to come. But the people that are dazzled by the glitter of this world, then they do fasad, they become criminals, they go across all boundaries, as the surah meant, both these surahs mention this. So here I actually went through this whole to show you the connection between the two surahs for further research, but also to make that, you could say, uh, the, the punchline that I had at the end between inna ya'juja wa ma'juja la mufsiduna fil ard versus ya bani israel la tufsiduna fil ard o bani israel you will cause corruption in the world twice <coughs> now that gives you some insight on who ya'juj and ma'juj are when you bring the two surahs together according to the tafsir style and methodology used by mona farahi Okay, it's, and this is also the style and methodology that was used by Dr. Isra Ahmed Rahmatullah And so I hope uh, you that had the patience to stay for this, especially after all my coughing, that you had, you enjoyed this and felt you benefited from this, inshallah ta'ala. Now what you have to do is you have to go and listen to Sutul Isra and then Sutul Kahaf and then Sutul Isra and then Sutul Kahaf until you begin to feel the sound, the similar sounding verses in both of them, right? But still, Isra will tell you what will bring destruction. And still, Kahaf will tell you what will save you from destruction. And this is why when there is something bad happens, you say, SubhanAllah. And when something good happens, you say, Alhamdulillah. So Surah Al-Isra starts with SubhanAllah. And Surah Al-Kahaf starts with Alhamdulillah. Because Allah is saying, yes, there will be a great war. But this war is what will bring Muslims to the top. With all their technology and all their power and everything that they got. Right? This will plain, make everything a plain field again. <coughs> it will begin with their fighting amongst themselves. So, now I want to end by one last point. Surah Isra tells you of a place from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, a area, a geographical area. That is where the final victory will take place. And so therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the beginning of it will happen with two people, the Prophet said, two groups of, groups of people, two groups of big people having the same claim fighting with each other. Christians fighting with Christians. That's where it will begin. Where it will end will be this geographical area where finally the Mahdi will be and Isa alayhi will be and where the final victory will be given. And so one place is telling you the geographical area. 
And the other surah, Surah Al-Kahf, is telling you a great terrible punishment and a great terrible war is coming. But Alhamdulillah, because it's all worth it. Because why? Then soon the deen will rise. And soon the believers will have an upper hand. And just as the Muslims in Arabia that were weak and in the desert and they didn't have the ability to fight the Persians or the Romans. But because the Persians and the Romans were fighting each other, they became weak and that gave a chance for the Muslims of Arabia to rise. Again, Muslims from Arabia will rise. And they will, but it will be because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set in motion so many events that then will allow Muslims to rise in a powerful way. So I end with this. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولساء المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته